Our guest tonight has played just 36 games in the red and blue, but has quickly become a fan favourite in the short amount of time that he's been playing. He's known for his dash-off halfback, his exciting runs, his monstrous torps and his love of nippies. He's well on his way to knocking off Big Maxi Gorn as the cult hero of the MFC and the broader footy world in general. I'm talking about none other than the great Jaden Hunt. Welcome to the Demon Land podcast, Jaden. I ah, appreciate it, guys. Good to be here. So, um, <clears throat> Jaden, uh, we have to start off with that uh, massive kick that you unleashed um, at three-quarter time against the Crows in Darwin. Uh, the question on, everybody lips, on everybody's lips is, has the ball landed yet? And the more serious question uh, for you, exactly how far out were you? Because it looked like uh, you were about 60 to 65 metres out. And I've learnt that it might have been against the wind. Is it any, any <laughs> yeah. truth in that? Yeah, I don't know exactly, but I reckon, yeah, around 65. And, yeah, I reckon there was a bit of a bit of a headwind, so I'll claim that. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I just, just decided to let it launch in the Darwin air, I guess, and let it flow, and lucky enough, I got it pretty good, so sailed through. We read in the papers afterwards that you it's something you practice and have um, going back to your junior days. Is that the is that one of the biggest that you've gotten onto? What's the what's the longest? Oh no, I didn't actually quite get it. I reckon. I reckon I've done a few bigger at training, but <laughs> it's definitely a fine art to get them to get them perfect. But yeah, I like to just once after training, once I've kicked off all the serious stuff, just let out a few barrels, and I often just wait till I get one, then then I'll get off the track. Great stuff, uh, Jaden. You've uh, brought the headband. Uh, back into fashion, uh, following in the footsteps of some other demon champions uh, such as uh, Todd Viney and David Schwartz. Uh, have you always worn a headband? And, you know, how do you decide which colour and which design you're going to wear on any given day? Is, uh, is there any uh, rhyme or reason to that? Well, yeah, I haven't really worn headbands. I didn't have that long of hair, but I guess it started last year once it got... Once my hair got too long, it started to annoy me. I just, uh, mum used to make me just a headband out of a piece of a uh, shoelace, really. She used to make them for me. And then I saw a few old f- photos of, uh, like you mentioned, Todd Viney and even Terry Wallace. And I thought, why not? Like, why not bring a bit of colour back into the game? And it's a good way to show team colour. So that's why I've gone the red and blue kind of headband, just to show my passion for the club, I guess. And yeah, it's a, it's a bit, bit easier to hold the hair back as well. You haven't thought of going into business with your mum and just having a little side venture selling your headbands because no doubt you'd be <laughs> able to sell them by the truckload, I'm sure. Well, yeah, I've actually moved mum on. So there's an actual company that makes them for me now. So, yeah, if you keep an eye out, I think we're going to start selling them soon, hopefully. There's, um, there's famous footage of the uh, normally very placid Bruce Dool, who became enraged one afternoon because an opponent tried to take off his headband. Uh, has that ever happened to you? Do opponents, you know, get stuck into you because of it? Uh, I guess uh, Jed Lamb the other the other day against Carlton, he was yep. kind of playing on me, giving me a bit of niggle and whatnot. So I actually went to have a sip of water and purposely missed my mouth and got it in his face just to annoy him. <laughs> nice. And he actually ripped he actually responded by ripping it off, but the umpire told if he did it again, it would be a free kick, so I guess I invented a rule. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. High contact. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I noticed that uh, Josh Wagner has taken to wearing one. Uh, have you told him to back off and to try and get his own own look? <laughs> nah, it's good. I like it. <laughs> I like, he, he just uses tape, so he's old school, which I, which I admire. <laughs> Yeah, that's old school. David Schwartz, uh, I think, used to just use the tape back in the day. Jaden, your your love of nippies has become legendary very quickly online. Uh, How did that all start? And um, have they approached you for some kind of um, sponsorship arrangement? Yeah, so I guess I used to have them as a kid and then I kind of just lost all contact with them and then just... a few months ago, I found a shop that sold them again, and yeah, I guess um, engaged in my love for them as well. It's just a great, great tasting drink. It's a bit of a bit of a unique business they've got going because they they sell in the most weird locations you'll ever think of. So I admire that. Yeah, the and uh, 
Go ahead. Yeah, um, and uh, we're, we're sorting something out at the moment, so I think they're going to start giving me some free product, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> That's very nice. They're actually, a milk bar, like some dodgy little milk bar near me, sells them. So uh, if you need a hookup for them, I can uh, I can get them for you. Um, Absolutely, sounds good. I uh, went on to sort of uh, our Demonland Facebook page and and got people to sort of uh, ask people if they wanted to um, ask you any questions uh, tonight and. Most of the questions were actually regarding nippies. So one of the, the, <laughs> the most popular one was, "What's your favourite flavour?" Oh, definitely ice chocolate. <laughs> All right, there you go. So uh, if anyone's got uh, ice chocolate, uh, send them on to uh, to Jade. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Jade, can you tell us about the owl phenomenon? Um, they were stalking you for a while there. What's become of that mysterious connection that you had? <laughs> Yeah, well, I guess it all started um, just out in front of my house. This owl um, kind of was hooting us one day, me and my friend. And just whenever I was with that friend for the next few months, we would just run into a crazy amount of owls. So I decided <laughs> to look it up what it meant. and It meant two things, either wisdom or death. So oh, wow. yeah, I like to think, think I'm a lot more wise nowadays. <laughs> well... Let's let's hope it is the uh, the wise one, um, Jada. Moving on to football matters, um, you were plucked from relative obscurity at pick fifty seven uh, by the D's, despite not having played a tack cup or under eighteens. Uh, how did you rate your chances going into the draft, and and what were your expectations? Well, to be honest, on actual draft, I, I thought I was a fairly good chance, but. Uh, that's just because, yeah, Melbourne and uh, a couple of other clubs were pretty interested. But it all really started maybe six weeks before the draft. Uh, I wouldn't have had any intention to play AFL, not even VFL. I didn't even know if I was going to play footy, to be honest. And, yeah, just one day in the school library, my um, coach, who was Robert Shaw, um, just came up to me and said, yeah, you won't believe this, but I um, just spent the morning talking to five or six AFL clubs about you. So... From that moment, it just completely changed and I had to do fitness tests and interviews and stuff and didn't really have time to tell anyone about it because it was all rushed. So, yeah, I suppose before that day in the library, I would have had absolutely zero idea that, w- that I'd actually be end up on an AFL list. So it was pretty crazy few weeks who for were me, the, really. Who were the other clubs that were into you? Oh, there's a few. So I think there was a bit of interest from Essendon, St Kilda, a few other Melbourne clubs. But in the end, it was... It was going to be Collingwood or Melbourne that um, really, I guess, ramped things up in the weeks leading up to the draft. So I thought I'd yeah, end up on at one of those two teams. Um, is there any truth to the story? And I've heard it from a few different sources, and it's around the place, that the recruiters actually went to watch your Brighton Grammar teammates, um, such as Christian Salem and Josh Kelly, but you're the one that actually stole the show. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, that was very lucky. So I don't think rec- too many recruiters would go to school games if they're not looking at, yeah, I guess, the top guys. And I was lucky enough that, like you said, Christian and uh, both and Josh Kelly were both in the in the Brighton Grammar team. So, yeah, yeah, my, even Jace Taylor tells me that, yeah, they went to watch them and I kind of he got told to look out for another player, which was myself. So, yeah, lucky enough to catch catch a few recruiters' eyes, I guess, just from school footy. Yep. Nice. So um, you, you spent more than a, a year on the sidelines, uh, not not long after you came to the club. Uh, did you ever think your footy career might be over before it even got started and that uh, injuries would stop you from uh, getting a chance? Yeah, for sure. Like My first two years, I probably missed over 80% of the game. So, yeah, coming to the end of that, because you get a two-year contract when you get drafted, Coming to the end of that, when there was only a few games left, I obviously wasn't in contract. And, yeah, I really thought, didn't know what was going to happen, but lucky enough, I um, got a few few pretty serious talks with some senior players and coaches to really, I guess, it's time time now to show what I've got. So I was lucky enough to finish off well in that, I think it was the 2015 season, and just scraped in for a year contract at the end of that season. And then, yeah, I was lucky enough to have a good pre-season and go go on from there. Uh, you, have, you, have you missed a game since since uh, your debut? No, I haven't yet, which is, yeah, fingers crossed I can keep that up. Nice. Yeah, excellent. Um, 
your pace is obviously widely um, acknowledged across the league. Have you always been this fast? And do you, like, did you grow up doing aths? And was that ever an option for you at any stage? Uh, I guess I was pretty quick when I was real young, but um, it's probably why I was never in TSC Cup. I stopped growing, so I was always really short from maybe 12 years old to 18. So, yeah, I wasn't super quick, but uh, in year 12, I had the massive growth cert, which uh, really brought on the speed. So I actually wasn't in the AFS team, but a couple of weeks before the big APS schoolboys kind of carnival, I went in the house AFS and smoked the guy that was supposed to be running. So I ended up having to run to the school with no training. So it was pretty funny. Um, one of the other questions a lot of uh, 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 people on Facebook wanted to ask today was, uh, who is the fastest guy at the club? Um, uh, people were throwing out Jeffy Garlett and um, and Sam Frost. Uh, are you quicker than these guys, or who's the fastest? Well, yeah, we never actually go and just do a 100-meter race. It'd be, yeah. be hard to tell. I reckon me and Jeffy would uh, probably have to start on Big Frosty, but... I wouldn't want to be at the end of that race with Frosty getting up to full speed. He's, yeah, he's got a, got, a, got a very high top speed, so it'll be an interesting one. So we've seen you play at, at half forward on a couple of occasions this year um, as the team you know, was shuffled around to accommodate injuries. Uh, did you enjoy playing near goal, or do you prefer playing off the half-back line uh, where you can add uh, to your metres gain numbers? Yeah, it was, yeah, it was interesting. I like kind of uh, pinching in the forward line so it's good when you're kind of um, just halfway through the game if you need something just to go down there for a bit of a change up but yeah I also like like having a kind of your own fate decided by yourself so often if you're playing in the forward line you're relying on others so in the back line I kind of like seeing the whole ground and seeing where I can go so but yeah having said that it's good fun kicking a goal too so I don't mind either position. Just talking about your kicking uh, for goal, that that uh, disallowed goal against Carlton. Did you run too far? <laughs> I don't know. I was probably uh, I was a bit out of control just because I went to kick it a couple of times and I would have got smothered. So I just uh, had to keep on taking people on. So I was probably right on the line. Yeah, so it was an interesting one. I still think it was a goal. I think just because you kept uh, sort of moving to, to the side, um, that sort of made it look like you were running further. But uh, I've seen other people get away with it running in a straight line for, for further. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> at least we won the game. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Jade, you're hard as a cat's head. Um, you fly for the ball uh, without any fear whatsoever. Um, we've seen you... Um, almost, um, uh, well, almost wipe yourself out on a couple of occasions this year. Most recently, I think, against the Dogs at Etihad, was it? Um, has that always been part of your game, or is that just, you know, the demand that the um, that Simon Goodwin's brand of football asks of you? Yeah, it's a bit of both, I guess, yeah. It's always a big mantra at the club to go when it's your time to go, but... I think I'm definitely someone that's very relaxed off the field, but once I get on the ground, I get a bit of white line fever. So, yeah, I guess it's just instinct just to go at it, and I just can't stand losing anything, so that's probably why I throw my body at things. Nice. Um, Jaden, you recently showed uh, loyalty and faith to the club by signing an extension to your contract until 2020. Um, you could have easily waited out your contract, uh, shopped yourself around and perhaps chased some dollars elsewhere. Uh, what was it that got you to sign on the dotted line and commit to the Ds for another couple of years um, before the you know, contract was out? I guess it's probably the major reason, just the direction we're going at. Um, I love uh, building my game with everyone else. I guess a lot of the, a lot of the list is similar age to me. We're all on the same kind of scope of improvement, so... Yeah, I see a great future in the next few years, hopefully, and yeah, that's why that's why I probably didn't really wasn't really a choice for me. It was always going to be the day. Uh, well, well, Jaden, since you showed your faith and loyalty in the club and its supporters, uh, Demonland has graciously accepted to extend our player sponsorship of you until at least twenty twenty. Um, at that stage, we'll take stock and uh, we'll make a decision uh, with the direction that we <laughs> want to go in. But uh, <laughs> it's looking good at the moment. Uh, um, another uh, One of the guys in there, we've got a chat room going now. One of the guys has just asked, um, 
um, is about the synergy in the back six. Um, how do they build that and how difficult is it to get the zone to work so well? Yeah, no, definitely. It's something we've been uh, working on that um, we're really, it's all in it together and we really help each other out. So we're not too man conscious, I guess, one on one match up sort of thing. It's kind of building trust for, for others to swap over men and it all just, yeah, it all, I guess, comes down to actions. If you do the right things, you're going to build trust and, and then we get that as a group and we can move forward. So, yeah, we're definitely growing on that. As you can see, there's some, some absolute guns in the back line that are helping me out a huge amount. So, it's, yeah, it's a, real, it's a real good group and I love working with them. Well, you're yet to play 50 games um, and many of your teammates like uh, Oliver Petraka, Oscar McDonald, they're also young and still a lot of development to come. Uh, how exciting is it around the club at the moment uh, with such a t- talented young list and, you know, with a real chance of playing in September this year? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we can't wait to hopefully yeah, finish off the season well. But to be honest, yeah, we're always looking to improve more. I think the team that can improve in this second half of the year has got, got any, as much chance as anyone else. So, yeah, we just want to keep on improving and not have, uh, I guess, hiccups like we have in a few of the games in the last month. We want to play like we did on the weekend and really get that consistency into this young group. Yeah, it's... Uh, Jaden, sorry, just uh, one last one for you from the chat room. Uh, and we do appreciate your time uh, tonight. Um, it's obvious through your social media presence that you're very comfortable uh, with who you are, um, you know, out off the off the field. Um, yet on field, as you said, you've got that uh, sort of white line. Uh, white line fever. Have you always been sort of comfortable in your own skin and a little bit out there and and uh, um, uh, perhaps not uh, concerned with what other people think of you? Oh, I haven't always been. The first couple of years of the club, I was pretty quiet. I was always the same personality, but I guess I just kept it to my own friends. And now with just more confidence, I guess I just, uh, uh, yeah, like you say, not afraid to show other people what I'm like. So. Yeah, I'm pretty much an open book at the moment and yeah, don't really care if people people judge me in a different way or anything like that. No, well, th- this uh, this listener raised it in a positive sense and said that was saying to his uh, son that you're a great role model because uh, you are sort of comfortable with who you are, obviously. So it was only raised in a positive sense, yeah. Yeah, no, I think, yeah, definitely. It's, it's a, uh, you're kind of the AFL kind of tries to mould you in a certain way, but there are ways you can show your personality, just like Gorney. Gorney kind of shows that as well. There's a there's a line, obviously, but, yeah, if you're just showing showing who you are, there's nothing wrong with that, is there? No, not, at, not. not at all. Uh, Jaden, I just want to thank you for your time you've given us to, today. Uh, we really, really do appreciate it. Um, and good luck for the rest of the year. Uh, we'll be watching, uh, and hopefully we do get to... Uh, have a bit of action in September, so uh, best of luck for all of that. Nah, no worries, enjoyed it, and thanks for signing me up for 2020. <laughs> Not a problem, mate. We'll, we'll catch <laughs> thanks, you. Thanks, Jaden. We'll catch you at the uh, end of year function. Hopefully, uh, maybe there's some silverware involved. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. Cheers, See you later, mate. guys. Cheers. Bye. Bye.